all right what's up guys uh back with another video we got a old square nose super jet i recently picked it up um not sure what the plans are yet but when i bought it from the guy it did not run so i bought it kind of sight unseen he did not show me that the engine was this bad but in this video we're just going to go over some like the basics to check when you know the ski's been sitting for a long time really what to go over so my first thing was, you know, I don't know, I would assume there was a lot of water in this boat at one point, just of how disgusting it is. Uh, someone painted that stock engine. All this paint is flaking off, so I'm going to pull the motor and uh, get all this crap paint off. I hate when people really do this to the stock engines, but anyways, first things first, I haven't cranked it over. Um, I just pulled the plugs. I'm just leaving them in upside down, so when I mess around with the paint chips right now, it doesn't flake paint straight down in the motor but right here i have a you know cheap little um camera i bought it i believe off of amazon but what i'm going to show you guys is i use this we'll use it a couple times now but um it's really nice for instead of just firing up the motor and you know rolling the dice that you could put this down the cylinders really check stuff out so you can see i dropped a piece of paint in there but you could tell that the engine's not rusted which is great i mean you got a little carbon build up which is normal but it's hard to tell but all the cylinder walls you know there might be some scrapes here and there but no rust just all extra carbon build up so the motor you know it's not the greatest but at least we know we could turn it over as of right now. Um, I could show you the other cylinder too. Sorry, this is hard. There's a lot of wire for some reason. So this piston, you could tell, has a lot of extra carbon buildup. Same thing, score here and there on the cylinders, but as of right now, you know, no water. Doesn't say that it's not sitting down the crank, which would really suck, but as of right now, fingers crossed, this motor should be decent. So my next step, I'm gonna take that crappy battery out because I doubt there's any life left in it. I mean, the guy had the negative left on it, just dropped a positive somewhere in here. So I'm gonna take this battery out, put one of mine in and crank it over. Once it turns over, I mean, I could technically do it by hand as long as the pump's not locked up. I mean, that's always good. So it turns over really easily. Um, you could tell actually, it's still building a little bit of pressure. Gas is moving back and forth in the lines. So you know, it's building up something for the pulse. But um, yeah, we'll throw a battery in it, turn it over, make sure all the electronics are good, and then get a quick compression reading on it. So battery's hooked up. Um, it does turn over, which I can show. I don't wanna uh, do it a bunch of times because it's uh, shooting paint everywhere. And I do not want to go down the motor, but just check out my compression tester. So I'll give compression readings in a few seconds. Rear cylinder is at 150 on the dot. Surprising, but awesome. Front cylinder, just a tad bit weak at 140. Nothing that's horrible, actually uh, pretty good, in my opinion. All right, um, one last thing to check too, while you're this far into it. It's always nice to check to uh, make sure all the electro electronics are working. Even though the starter works, doesn't mean everything else is working. So I just put the plugs back in and let's see if it's got spark. I mean, for me, it's got pretty good spark. I know the spark could be better, but um, it really is hard to get good spark without a great uh, grounding. And since there's so much paint built up all over this motor, I think that's some pretty good spark. Um, you know, next step, I mean, a lot of people would probably want to fire it right away. But for me, I can't stand working in a disgusting environment. So I think I'm just going to... Um, to be honest, empty this hole out. Maybe not today, 
but um, probably do it later on this week. It'll be in the same video, but empty this hole out, clean everything. Hopefully all this paint comes off this motor really easily as it is so I can get this back to how it should be. Um, I didn't say it at the beginning of this video, but this is actually a 650. So two ways of telling. One, you can go right up onto the hole itself. It's got a big wear mark through the sticker, some paint. Someone did paint the inside of this hole. But it does say SJ650. Another way to tell your mid shaft carrier bearing housing or your through hole bearing, whatever it is. Um, it's a different bolt pattern than a 701. So I only have, mind the mess in my garage, I mean, my lord. I have a 701 carrier bearing housing somewhere. Yeah, right here. So it's hard to tell, but it's completely different from a 650. If I had one side by side, I would show you, but the bolt pattern is completely different on them. So that's one way you can tell. You can tell by the sticker and you can tell by the VIN number. Uh, previous owner, I'm just going to leave that for another time. <laughs> previous owner did paint this boat, as you can tell, but when they were painting it, I don't know why, but they ground off the VIN number. Now, I did ask him why. He said it was the previous owner from him. Um, it had me really sketched out thinking that this boat was stolen, but he did give me paperwork. And some people don't know this, especially this owner, but on Super Jets, there is another VIN tag on the square noses right up in here. You could feel it with your finger if you reach under there. So, I rolled the dice personally. I mean, if it was stolen, it was stolen. It really sucks. Sketchy for me. Good for him. He got out of it. Um, but I rolled the dice. I didn't want to say anything to him at the time. Um, just kind of help my negotiating skills because he was asking a lot for this, believe it or not, and this, you know, the way it was sitting. So that was some negotiating that could possibly be stolen and uh, the paperwork could not match. But like I said, he didn't know much about skis. He just wanted to get out of it. He was really upset. For the, the money he had into it and i wasn't trying to be a jerk but i mean you guys can tell you know he couldn't even turn it over um and seeing it like this is pretty disgusting and this motor very well could have been shot so like i said i was bargaining with him um and when i got home i checked the vin number to the paperwork he did give me it matched um paperwork still very sketchy it's not really signed over that well. Um, I'm going to get it registered in my name and then go from there, though. I mean, I have something, so hopefully the DMV can cut me a break. But I just want to inform people. But so, like I said, it is a 650. I believe my paperwork, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it was a 92. So 92, 701, you can tell right there where I rubbed off. 701 61x's um reed gauges this whole piece is different from a 650 they look identical you cannot fi slide the 650 uh reeds into a 701 they're different another dead giveaway which someone could easily switch this but 61x right on the side of the cylinders um the heads you know you can go buy them but you know people could always switch them it's not likely to switch the domes like the heads with the 650 to 701 you're not really going to gain much the bore is different anyways it is a true 701 thank god i mean 650s really suck horsepower wise i mean if you ride them you ride them jet ski's a jet ski but anyways long story short i got it it is pretty close to running i mean i could put gas in it and fire it but i'd rather pull the tank Put new gas lines on it and go through it completely before you know doing something that i shouldn't the previous owner did say that these were brand new he just put them on i mean they feel it so i'll probably just blow them out to be honest and run them if these were old they'd be brittle so but i really want to get this clean i can't stand working like this i don't want to deal with it later if i put gas in the gas tank and everybody knows how that is so i'll touch base when uh i get further into it hopefully no problems
All right, it got pretty dark out, so I'm using a little flashlight. But, oh, what happened? <laughs> uh, motor's out. As you can see, um, it's very gross. Oops. So, I'm kind of glad I took it out. You know, I don't like, like I said, working with a mess. And, um, you can tell that someone definitely uh, painted the inside of this hole. So, I'm probably not going to take the mid shaft out right now. I know it's probably garbage. Um, good possibility though, it's still good. Give it a the good old. Doesn't, doesn't sound the greatest. Um, could always be the pump. But, motor's out, it's on the ground. Uh, looks like crap, but hopefully we can fix that. Worst case scenario, it goes back in that way, but it won't look like this. I can promise that. But I'm going to go back to uh, clean the inside of the hole. Get it hopefully a little bit better. I mean, I'm not going to take any paint off in here. It is what it is. But you could definitely see the water line across the bottom of the boat. Um, so it definitely had water sitting in it. That's why I really wasn't sure if this motor was going to run well. But turned over, had spark. <laughs> So we'll see once we put it back in there. But that's about it for now. Well, as you can tell, it is nighttime now, but it's all clean. Um, I think it's a night and day difference. I don't like that someone painted this hole on the inside. I never do it to any of mine, even though Yamahas have some of the worst interiors. I just don't like it. I think it looks really crappy, but to each their own. I'm not gonna go crazy and peel up all the paint. It flakes very easily, as you can tell, just from hot water, this back corner blew out. But um, I think it looks great for what I did. You know, I just bleached it, let it sit, scrub it, bleach it, let it sit. I did like three layers of bleach or coats of bleach. Um, so yeah, kind of looks crappy with all the missing paint, but it looks amazing compared to what it was. So I pulled the water box and gas tank also and everything. But that's it. Um, and then I'm going to get over to this at some point. Not tonight. It's just too late. And I'm going to do a thorough clean on this. Take apart the carb, clean it, make sure everything's good. Um, and go from there. All right, guys. It's been a little bit since you've seen this ski. But I did it. Uh, well, where I left off was I pulled the motor out and, uh, you know, cleaned the hole pretty well. It's got some water in it right now just from sitting but it's actually been a few months and uh i decided to put a different motor in it because i just could not get the orange paint off the other motor to my liking um so i put just another you know 61x back in here put a different carb on it which is just a stock carb with a reva flame arrestor on it or adapter and then just a normal prox flame arrestor uh, the only problems that I really found in this boat was that the ground was bad. So instead of trying to run it back under there when it broke off, I just went out and bought a new one from the auto parts store and just threw it on there. Uh, the ski does run now. Again, different motor. Uh, I just did not feel like trying to get all the paint off when I was uh, working on it at the moment. But the ski runs now. It's got a battery in there. It's dead because the temperature dropped so much. But ski does run i could drop another battery in, in a few minutes and uh show you guys but just figured i'd show you the update show you that the ski is back to its former glory and that it actually runs